a thick muscular back is a sign of one thing. You lift some seriously heavy weights in the gym. You don't have to be a world-class powerlifter or weightlifter, but if you truly want an impressive back, including massive traps, density across your upper back and middle back, and a thicker lumbar, you're gonna have to be someone who has the strength ability to lift some heavy loads in the bent over position. And back thickness training is not about doing 100 exercises, but rather just three basic movement variations that you get extremely strong on. The first being a heavy row. You can use a machine, cables, or dumbbells. But if I tell you to grab a barbell, bend over 45 to 90 degrees, and row some serious weight, and you can't, you probably haven't gotten strong enough on rows to build a massive back. I agree that there's many benefits to chest supported rows, and I do plenty myself. Guys who have built massive backs through rows have gotten very strong on barbell and T-bar rows, but later use chest supported rows to emphasize other areas of the back. Very rarely does it work in reverse. And if you see that pro bodybuilder or somebody in the gym with an impressive back development only doing machine and cable rows, don't be confused. He's likely performing them now for a good reason. But challenge him to row some heavy weight off the floor, and I guarantee you, if his back development's impressive, he will likely handle some impressive numbers on basic rows. So never skip out on those heavy basics. The second movement variation you want to hammer are hip hinges. Some of the strongest deadlifters in the world have massive backs. That's no secret, but deadlifts do come with a cost of being a much more taxing movement with potentially higher risk. That doesn't mean if you do deadlifts, you'll break in half. But as a bodybuilder, you have to pick and choose your exercises wisely, especially if you're going to do this long term. As someone who's been lifting for 20 years, I've collected my fair share of aches and pains, but I've always prided myself as someone who trains with the long game in mind. If I can avoid excessive wear and tear by substituting movements with less stressful variations and lower risk movements that give an equal or even better stimulus for muscle growth specifically, I'm all for that. And if you're a bodybuilder, you can get those same benefits of deadlifts for muscle growth specifically by even performing things like RDLs and stiff leg deadlifts. Pick the variation that's most comfortable for you, and you can even alternate between them if you enjoy both. But regardless of which variation you choose, I want you to think about it the way I do. It's not about what your one rep max is. It's about how much progression you can make on an exercise over time. I've never seen someone increase their deadlifts by 100 to 200 pounds who didn't also add slabs of muscle to their frame as a result. I'm not the strongest deadlifter by any means. The heaviest weight I've ever pulled was 500 pounds. But every time my strength increased from pulling three plates to then pulling four plates and eventually pulling five plates, my back and entire posterior chain got bigger. The third exercise is an upper back focused row. If you want a massive back, those lower traps, upper back and rhomboids should not be neglected. And doing some form of chest supported row focusing on stretching these muscles and training them through a large range of motion is going to emphasize everything from the traps down to the middle back. Like I mentioned, chest supported rows and even machine rows have their place in training, but these are movements that I would prioritize less than unsupported rows, especially in the beginning of training. As you become more advanced, your training should alter to fit your needs. And there are plenty of reasons an advanced bodybuilder might want to focus more on chest supported rows. Perfect example is me at the moment. I'm no longer focused on just trying to build a massive base, but rather improve my physique's weak points. For me, that means I need a bit more attention and focus to my middle and upper back. So chest supported rows are great here. But remember this, I built my physique on basic barbell rows, dumbbell rows, and T-bar rows. And it's important to understand that what actually built the muscle in the first place, rather than what I'm currently doing at the moment. Many guys today will look at everyone on social media doing exercises and think, because he's a pro bodybuilder and does this movement, that's what I need to grow. That's not the right way to look at it. You need to ask them, what did they do to build his physique from the beginning? And if you actually learn what they did, you'll likely be surprised that it looks very different than what they do now. Apply these tips to your training now if your goal is a massive back. And if you want the exact programs that I personally recommend to build muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, check out my old school mass game programs down below. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.